praise and peace from God, our Father and from the Son, Jesus Christ, be with all of us this morning. Veterans Day, 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, we are approaching that time of the year when we will start talking about something that should concern all of us. It did concern the Sadducees this morning as we read the gospel concerns Moses. Now, as I said, the church here, it is a time in church here where we talk a lot about, and we will see some of the readings talking about the life one day will end. At least the life we know. And this planet and upon earth are we prepared for? What well, Jesus said today, it is a beautiful um, statement about how the life everlasting will be. And it actually comes very, very handy, and uh, I like to talk about life everlasting in this time of the year because we many, many times before holidays find ourselves running to the malls and the stores, doing the nonsense, wasting of money and time, buying things, shopping, cooking, getting so busy with things and forgetting about the real meaning of the holidays. Do you know that the average American is spend about $900 per child during the holidays? I'm talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas. And if you, like me, as a child, as a birthday, November 23rd, then it gets a little worse. <laughs> I have to buy a gift. She invested in your record. But then it comes Christmas. But this is what happens in our lives, and sometimes we are, and we tend to forget about the things important because we have things to do, and we worry about them. And that's the human condition, that's the human behavior, there is nothing much we can do about it. The worst thing about the holidays and uh, People buying so much is a, uh, this, they put this uh, research together, they said that most of the Americans or the American average family will be in debt for about six months after Christmas. It means that they will pay the bills by the summer. That's terrible. We are taking or the, maybe we could say the world was taking away the real meaning of the holidays and putting in the credit card number. People are in there. Taking and making people spend money rather than enjoying the true meaning of the seasons. If we would not just worry so much about the things to buy and do in this life. Worries and worries. Do you know someone that worries about everything? Do you worry about everything? One day I read this church sign that says, Bad attitude, worry is like a flat tire. You don't go anywhere until you change it. It's time to change. Jesus' message today it is about things that really matter. The reading of the gospel this morning tells us that people came to Jesus with worries and concerns. Maybe the Sadducees would give some false accusations, but mostly the scribes are worrying about what's going to happen with, in this case, Jesus gave an answer about this woman that was married, the husband died. She married again, the husband died again, and for seven times, the husband passed away. Now in heaven, how is it going to be? Jesus' answer is concise and to the point, or is straight to the point. 
and in, in heaven there is no marriage. Everybody's going to be like the angels. What a short answer. There is no marriage in heaven. Well, if you think about it, there's no in I'm just kidding. You know, Thanksgiving in laws comes to eat them. Anyway, so Jesus answered the question, telling them, don't worry. There are better things prepared for you, much better than any you can imagine. So take this time. So and don't worry about it. And the answer that I like, and this really and the, the most meaningful answer, it is the verse 36. Jesus says, after all. To those who didn't believe in resurrection, the Sadducees, the gospel was clear. The Sadducees, they didn't believe in resurrection. They were just a, a stick of the first five books of the Bible, and that's it. We don't really know what they would think about. Hey, okay, once we die, what, what become of us? They didn't give that answer, but they didn't believe in resurrection. But there were more people, not just Sadducees, among Jesus, and Jesus wants to give them an answer. Jesus wants to uh, satisfy that question, that thing that bothers, that worry that bothers them about the eternal life. Don't worry about that, that thing anymore because that thing is taken care of. Jesus says in verse 36, the people die once, then if they are in Christ. They can not die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God being sons of resurrection. There is a unique and meaningful teaching behind Jesus' answer. An answer to the most critical human spiritual question. Where and how I am going to spend eternity. When I was working as a church planter, I used to go around the neighborhoods and knock in the houses and ask people about where you can spend eternity. And the question, the first one, the question would be if Jesus would call you today and ask you why do you think you deserve to come in heaven, what would you say? Well, this event was an explosive case of matter that was created by someone to approach people and ask them about eternal life. Majority of the people would say, well, because I'm a good husband, I'm a good man, I pay my taxes, I do this, I do this, I do that. I do that. The Sadducees, they, they, they thought they could do everything on their own, and because of the things they did, they could have, I don't know what they would say, in the life everlasting. Some sort of life and the last thing they would believe, not necessarily in the resurrection, but they would do for themselves. Now Jesus comes and says something different. There is nothing in you, it is all provided by God in Christ Jesus. The resurrection it is not on you, but and Christ Jesus and His power. But one thing is necessary to um, notice. Jesus doesn't say much about how the eternal life is going to be, but He says, and He most certainly says, that people will spend eternity. The question is not how I'm going to get there. The question, I mean, the question is not how the things are going to be. That's not so important. We're going to see once we get there. But Jesus was preparing people to 
to understand how are you going to get there? There is no, there is no sin, there is no tears, there is no suffering. But most importantly, you cannot get there on your own. It is Jesus preparing a place for you, and that's it. The core of the Bible's message, it's all about the hope that Christ provides. The hope that Jesus provides for those who are lost in their sins, but also lost in, their, in themselves. They think they can do everything themselves. They think they can deserve it. They think they can, they can have it on their own strength. From the beginning of the Bible to the end, the message is always the same. God provides. God provides eternal, eternal, the eternal home, the resurrection for all of us. And I always like this reading of the Old Testament. What a beautiful reading. If you go, when you go home today, read more carefully and uh, make this reading as a devotion time for you and your family. And pay attention to, to this conversation between Moses and God. Just pay attention to the words. I'm not going to go through all things, but I would like to say, look the way that Moses approached the burning bush. The first thing God says, Moses, Take your sandals. This is a holy ground because of God's presence. But when God called Moses, God, Moses said, I am. Here I am. Here I am with my sins. Here I am with my inability to serve. But here I am. And then God tells Moses, you know what? I have a task for you. You're going to go to the king of Egypt and you will tell, let my people go. Same as Jesus is doing in the New Testament. My people will go to heaven because of me, because of my sacrifice on the cross. Moses now is interceding for his people. And when he tried to find an excuse to not serve God, then God said, Moses, it's not on you, and it's not because of you. It is not about your strength, or your faith, or your power. I will be with you, Moses. That's the answer. And if they ask me, or they ask you, who is sending you? Then you just say, I am who I am. God doesn't need to give any explanation. Jesus said, I am preparing a place for you. That's it. Believe. He doesn't need to tell, hey, you know, heaven is like that, that, and that. Do you want to go? It's cool. Jesus said, I am preparing a place wonderful for you. Believe. It's for you. If that should be enough. He doesn't need to give explanation. Hey, we're gonna get married in heaven. Praise the Lord! No, no. <laughs> God is so wonderful. He doesn't need to be. He don't need the details. He asked Moses, and tell Moses, Moses, when the people ask who I am, just tell, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They know who to me. And the history tells us that God always provided that God was always with his people, giving them and leading them into the eternal home. In the beginning to the promised land. Now for us means the eternal home. So God called Moses. And God tells Moses, I am with you, Moses, just go. In the New Testament, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to tell us there is a promised land. We will be free from our sins. 
from those things that might impede us or stop us from going to heaven. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible says, By His love of God was manifested in us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. We live through Jesus Christ who came down from heaven to free us from the worst worry we have. Well, I shouldn't say the worst worry because we, don't, we should not worry about that. Yeah? Maybe the world was too worried about where they're going to spend time, where they're going to spend eternity. We don't, and we should not because we already have it. In Christ Jesus, who forgave and paid for all our sins, we already have the eternal home. I was so disappointed in one of my congregations. Well, it was a it was a missionary congregation, and one of my sons I asked my congregation. If you if you think you if you go to heaven, if you are sure you go to heaven, raise your hand. And just a few raise your hands. And uh, I start thinking about why they would not raise their hands because the church is all about telling people and making sure that people are sure that they will receive the eternal life. But Sometimes people didn't raise their hands because they had family problems, they had alcohol problems, they had drug problems. They had a they had a fight in the morning with a wife or husband. They were not feeling good and they were not feeling worthy because of their sins. And sometimes we don't feel worthy of the eternal life because we have our sins. And we sin a lot. But it's not on us. It is not because of my power. It was not, it is not because of me. It is because of Jesus. So if one day you feel not worthy of inheriting the eternal life, then just think that Jesus died for your sins, for my sins, so I can say that I am saved because of Jesus, not because of me. And when God told Moses to go to Egypt, God was telling Moses, my people are not worthy, but I'm still sending you to free them. When we are still not worthy, God sent Jesus to save us and give us the promise of eternal life. So don't worry. Your sins have been forgiven. Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross. He shed his blood for us. He gave us forgiveness and eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen.